Nope. Holy hell, it's finally winter. My car's covered in snow, I got an actual snow day off work, and I'm terrified to go outside because Sub-Zero might rip out my spine. Sub -Zero wins. So instead, I'll stay not dead and make a big pot of chili and some cornbread. Now this chili is slightly modified from a recipe I found online, which was in turn slightly modified from Aisha Curry's cookbook, The Seasoned Life. So I'll leave links to both in the description if you'd like to compare and contrast. As is tradition, we're going to start with our knife work. The first order of business is dicing a whole red onion. I'm not totally sure if I've gone over proper dicing technique in a previous video, so I'll explain it here just to be sure. Trim the side opposite of the root to create a flat surface, then have the onion through the root. Peel off that shit papery layer and discard it. Make several cuts through the onion half while keeping everything intact. Then make two to three lateral incisions through the flat side, perpendicular to the initial cuts. Be super careful and keep your fingers out of the way. Finally, slice across the cuts and watch your tiny onion cubes fall off. Don't worry if your cuts aren't perfect. You're not in a Michelin-starred restaurant. P.S. If you're interested in the science behind why you should slice an onion in a specific direction, I go over it in my breakfast burrito meal prep video, so check that out. The next order of business is dicing some bell peppers. For this, you want one red, one yellow, and one orange bell pepper. The process is exactly the same as slicing a bell pepper, which I also covered in my last video, but with the added step of cutting slices into dices. Pretty straightforward. Next up, we're dicing a jalapeno. If you have gloves, I highly recommend wearing one on the hand that's actually touching the pepper. This will prevent the capsaicin from transferring onto your skin, then forgetting about it and rubbing your eyes. Trust me, this sucks. Chop the top off of the pepper and then split it down the middle. A common misconception about hot peppers is that the seeds contain all the heat. It's actually the ribs of the chilies, aka the white part. The seeds are spicy because that oil has gotten on them. So if you want to reduce the heat from the pepper, remove the seeds and the ribs. If you like that extra heat, you can leave it all in there. From there, the process is the same as the bell pepper. Cut it in the strips and dice those strips. The final bit of knife work for now is mincing up some garlic. I'm using four good sized cloves, but feel free to use as much or as little as you'd like. Everyone knows that peeling garlic is a bitch, but there's a really simple trick to doing this. Lay the flat side of your knife over the clove and smash down. The skin should be mostly popped off and the clove will slide right out. This will break the clove a little bit, but that's not a big deal since it's going to get chopped up anyway. There are a couple different shortcuts you can take to mince garlic, like using a press or a fork, but for whatever reason I just went old school here and chopped it until it was minced. I'll be sure to show you the shortcuts next time I need some garlic. Set all the veggies aside and save some dishes by putting them in the same bowl. It's time to make the spice blend. I couldn't find my measuring spoons and I ended up just eyeballing all of my measurements, so just trust me here. Combine a half cup of chili powder, one tablespoon of cumin, one tablespoon of oregano, two teaspoons of Spanish smoked paprika, a quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and a quarter teaspoon of dried chili flakes, aka crushed red pepper. Mix well and set off to the side. Are you ready to finally do some actual cooking? Because we're finally going to do some actual cooking. Start a large pot over medium heat and add a splash of your preferred cooking oil. Add in a pound each of ground beef and ground chorizo. Use a wooden spoon to break up the meat and then add a few pinches of kosher salt and a whole lot of fresh ground black pepper. After the meat is browned evenly, use a slotted spoon or a spatula if you can't find your slotted spoon to remove the meat from the pot, leaving all that rendered fat in there. Now dump in all those veggies. Give them a good stir to ensure they all get coated with that fat and cook for about five minutes or so until they start to soften up. Lump in a six ounce can of tomato paste in the entire seasoning blend and stir frequently for another five-ish minutes until the mixture starts to darken. Add the meat back to the pot, then pour in a bottle, or a 16 ounce of a tall boy in my case, of your preferred beer. As always, taste test for quality. I'm using Modelo, as it seemed like a solid choice for this application, and while it was good, I think a stronger beer like a stout or even an IPA would really shine through all the other flavors happening. The beer is going to deglaze the pan, so make sure you use your spoon to scrape up all that delicious fond from the bottom. These next few steps are incredibly simple, so let's just zip right through them. Add in one can each of drained and rinsed pinto, black, and kidney beans, one can of fire roasted tomatoes, and a large can of crushed tomatoes. But wait, there's more! Throw in a half cup of maple syrup. This was a really unexpected addition to the chili that added a really nice but not overpowering sweetness to the dish, and it'll definitely be a staple in my chilies going forward. And that's just about it for the chili. Allow it to come back up to a boil, drop the heat down to low, and let it simmer for at least an hour, stirring occasionally. The longer you let it go, the more those flavors are going to get to know each other and the better it will be. In the meantime, let's make some cornbread. 
Did you go to the store only to find that people are f***ing idiots and panic buy all the milk due to the impending blizzard? Even the buttermilk? For one f***ing day of snow? Like, you live in the f***ing Midwest, so it's not like this is anything new? Well, fear not, because you can make a substitute. Combine one tablespoon of white vinegar with a cup of the milk you thankfully already had, give it a little mix, and set it off to the side for a few minutes. Then, bam, you have a buttermilk substitute. Turns out it's actually not the end of the f***ing world. Now that that's out of my system, combine one and a quarter cup of cornmeal, three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour, a quarter cup of regular ass sugar, a half teaspoon of baking soda, two teaspoons of baking powder, and one teaspoon of kosher salt, and whisk together until fully incorporated. Separately, combine a third of a cup of milk, two eggs, and a half teaspoon of vanilla extract, and whisk until the eggs are lightly beaten. Add this into the dry mix along with your cup of I can't believe it's not buttermilk and all but about one tablespoon of a stick of I can believe it's melted butter. Fold everything in the bowl with a rubber spatula until all of the dry ingredients are hydrated. I didn't mention it earlier, but before you start cooking, heat your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit and leave your empty cast iron skillet in there. Once it's good and hot, carefully, and I cannot stress that enough, remove the skillet. Use a dry folded towel or something similar to put under the probably legally a weapon to avoid burning your table or cutting board. And again, make sure your towels are dry. Steam burns are not a f***ing joke. Dump that remaining bit of melted butter into the skillet and give it a swirl to evenly coat it. Then pour in the cornbread batter, giving the pan a little wiggle to ensure that it's all evenly distributed. Put the pan back in the oven and drop the heat down to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Cook it for about 20 to 25 minutes or until the bread is completely set. You'll know it's done when you can jiggle the pan and there's no movement in the bread. Let this cool for at least 15 minutes before touching it. I hope you didn't forget about the chili, because that's about ready to eat. But not before we prep our garnishes. Avocado on chili sounds a little weird, and it definitely might not be for everyone, but I thought it was a nice addition, and a good opportunity to teach y'all how to prep one. Slice the avocado in half long ways, taking care to work the blade around the pit in the center, then pull it apart. Very carefully, use a paring knife to score slices across. Actually, you'd be a lot smarter to do this with a towel between your hand and the avocado. I've just done this a million times, so I don't really think to do that. But if you're new to this method or just not very proficient with a knife, use a towel. Then you just use a spoon to work around the edge and scoop it right out. I obviously didn't use the side of the pit, but to remove that, lightly tap your knife on the pit until the blade just barely penetrates it. Give it a little twist and the big ass seed will come right out. Again, do this with a towel in your hand. Cover the other half with plastic wrap and use it for avocado toast in the morning, you fucking millennial. The other garnish that you may or may not want to use is cilantro. This is pretty straightforward. Cut a tiny bit off of a bunch, less than you think, this will go a long way. Then just chop it, rotating the cilantro a couple times with each pass of your blade, depending on how finely chopped you want it. And that's about it. If you really want to impress somebody with a bowl of chili, you can actually plate it up really nicely. Place the bowl in the center of a plate with a damp paper towel in between them to keep the bowl from sliding around. Add a dollop of sour cream, lay out the avocado, and sprinkle the cilantro on top. Then you can arrange tortilla chips around the bowl for something that looks so nice it honestly kind of shocked me. As for the cornbread, well, that never made it to the plate. It was that good. So good, in fact, that it reminded my neighbor of her grandmother's cornbread. And if that's not a compliment, I don't know what is. Enjoy! Anybody who wants to like is willing to spend a couple extra dollars and not just buy some like blister pack Walmart knife to go with that one. So let's strain our pasta. What the f are you doing?